What is up, fellow Saltborn? This is Lexod, and this is what I believe is the best possible start for melee in Salt and Sanctuary. So, one of the first things is going to be the Amber Idol at the character creation screen. You can choose this. It's one of the starting gifts. There's also a ring and some small potions. Um, the ring is actually pretty good. It's the Grasping Ring. It increases your salt gain by a little bit. Because we're choosing the Amber Idol over that, I'm going to show you the location to that ring at the end of this video. Also, if you didn't, if you didn't choose the Amber Idol at the beginning of your playthrough, you can still follow this route and I'll show you how to upgrade your weapon at the end of this route. So what we're going to do is we're going to kill the first boss, and we're going to get his salt, and we're going to upgrade one of our weapons to a Kraken weapon, and then we're going to use a bunch of salt bags to get the skills that we need to be able to use that weapon. And we're going to do this without cheating. We're not doing any of the uh, salt dupes or the armor dupes or the any of the any of the kind of like regent dupes or anything like that. So this is the first salt, uh, first sanctuary, and our first salt bag is going to be on top of this one. I think there's going to be about 10 or 11 bags on our route, and they're kind of important, but if you do miss some of them, you can still just farm one of the monsters that are near the sanctuary to get the salt that you missed. So here's salt bag number two. Now we're going to make our way into the festering banquet. There's two bags of salt in here that we're going to pick up. Here's the first one in front of that shortcut. And here's the other one that makes four bags of salt. We're also going to pick up six rings. This first one that we're headed to right now is the bandage ring. It reduces wounding. And if you don't know what wounding is, it reduces your life bar permanently when you take damage. So say if you had 20 potions and you were fighting a boss and he was kicking your ass, even though you had potions, he'll eventually beat your health bar to be so permanently small that he'll kill you even if you have potions. So there was the location of the bandage string. And here's the shrine. This next boss, if you want to skip ahead and not watch the fight, that's cool. Just make sure that you know that you need a thousand gold for what I'm going to try to do in this playthrough because we're going to spend that gold on two blessed pages. Because there's only two knights in this route that we're going to kill. And then after that, we're just going to skip, we're going to skip all the other trash mobs the most that we can. So I actually kind of like this boss. He actually has three phases and most bosses only have two. And I think because he's the first boss and he has the third phase, it catches a lot of people off guard. I've seen multiple streamers. Um, I actually got to give a shout out to Soto Poppin. I was watching his stream and I was watching his first playthrough of this game. And I'm talking, I've watched a lot of people's first playthroughs of this game. I've watched people that had 10 viewers struggle with this boss. And I've watched Soto Poppin with 20,000 viewers struggle with this boss. But Soda Poppin probably took eight, nine, ten attempts. I, don't, I can't even remember if he even killed this boss. It kicked his ass, and it was pretty funny to watch. And it was mostly because I remember one point he choked. This boss has a third phase, and he changes his attacks up quite a bit. So if you get him down to about 25% life or less, he starts to use different attacks. And I've watched it catch so many people off guard. Alright, now that this boss is down, make sure you collect the 1000 gold, we'll have all of his salt. What you should do is use his key to open the door and talk to the NPC, but I'm going to take a shortcut right here just to show you guys. So behind me is the NPC, make sure you pick up that black pearl because it is essential to this route. Here's another patch, uh, pouch of salt, so that makes 5 pouches of salt. 
And here at the Bandits Pass Sanctuary, we're going to go ahead and take the oath for now, just so that we can have access to this vendor and go ahead and buy a couple of blessed pages. So up here on top of the sanctuary is another bag of salt. This bag of salt actually gives 500, which your first level is only 560, so this bag of salt almost gives one whole level. And here is our seventh pouch of salt. So after we kill this ghoul, we're going to go into the bat cave. There's a little secret area with the Kismet Stone Ring. The Kismet Stone Ring is pretty good. You can pair it with the Jester's Crown for good item find. And you know, it's kind of like the Dark Souls game. You can kill certain mobs to get the items that you need to upgrade your armors and weapons. So there's the location of the Kismet Stone Ring which comes with a little extra salt or a bag of salt rather so here we're going to set up a trap, we're going to jump over that trip wire we're going to kill this dog we're going to kill this dog everybody's playthrough is going to be a little different but make sure you get these two dogs killed and separated from him and once he's by himself Make sure you get all these bottles cleared out too. You don't want to have those in the way when you're trying to press circle on his dome. So we're going to go over here, kite him back to the tripwire. And the reason why we're doing this is because this monster in particular, he would take around two parries and reposts and a couple strikes to kill. I mean, he's, he's a pain in the ass to kill. So if we do it this way, we can just one-shot him. Pow. So there is another one of those that we're going to kill. So the only mobs in our path on this route that we want to kill, I mean, we're going to kill a few that's in our way, but their salt doesn't really matter. The salt bags is what matters the most. We just picked up another salt bag right there, if you missed it. So that, that one was the Bell of Return, and before that, before we jumped down here, was another bag. So there's another bag right there, and then we're going to head over here, I think this is the fused metal ring. It reduces your equip load, which allows you to wear more armor, which is basically a melee thing. But I'm gonna just stay butt ass naked for now. Helps me with my jumps. So there's the other knight. We're actually just gonna skip him for now, because I'm just gonna go ahead and pick up this great sword. So what we're doing now is we're going to take a detour over here to the Village of Smiles Sanctuary and then we're going to come over here to this ledge and we're going to take a long jump shortcut. Alright, now that we're over here, we're going to pick up our first um, stone guide. To my knowledge, this is the earliest stone guide that you can get. I've tried to find any of them that were closer to the starting area, but as far as I know, this is the first stone guide that you can get to in the game. And what we're doing here is we're going to come back to this area later, but for now, we've got almost all the materials that we need to upgrade our sword, so we're going to go do that. But you do need to do that though and get the stone guide, because what we're going to do later is we're going to come back there, and that's where we're going to get the attack power charm. So here I'm going to take on the second knight, what I meant to do is use the blessed page for the weapon enchant here to uh, help take him down, but I actually forgot. 
So on your playthrough, this is one of the reasons why we picked up those blessed pages. I would go ahead and use it. Increases the damage of your repost by quite a bit and all your attacks. Make it to where you can take him down a lot faster. We also picked up the three stone or uh, the three blessed pages where we got the stone guide and we can use those three pages on the next few boss fights. But either way, you're going to want to have plenty of blessed pages for boss fights on all of your playthroughs all the time. So right here I meant to just go all the way across. I actually fell down here, but I'm just going to make my way up and just keep going. Just as long as you stay near the top and you continue along to the right here and just keep going along the top. You can make your way to the transmute vendor so you can get the boss weapons. So up here I went to go get the antidote and on my way to get the antidote I got poisoned. So troll in this game. Normally you need the antidote for this next boss that we're about to fight because one of his spells throws blobs at you but uh because of how strong we're going to be by the time we get to him, we're just going to five shot him. And it's he's nothing he does or says is going to matter. So here's our last bag of salt. And we are almost to the transmute vendor. Now, if you are following this route and you did not select the Amber Idol at the beginning, this mob right here is the mob that you farm to get your Amber Idol. And here's the sanctuary, so you can just go, <coughs> excuse me, you can go back and forth between this sanctuary and that mob over and over again until you get your amber idol. And even if you didn't, you could farm your amber idols there so that you can experiment with the other weapons that are in the game, which is, that's what I did. So right here, we're going to go ahead and go to the bags of salt. We're going to burn through all of our, pou our pouches, our bags, our bundles go ahead and max out all of our salt. We're going to go ahead and upgrade our weapon to the Kraken weapon. So now we have the Shrouded Bulwark. Now you can see in the upper left hand corner you see the two red crosses over the weapon symbol the fact that I'm swinging my weapon so slow. I don't have class 2 unlocked yet, but you know, we've got the salt from the pouches. So let me go back and level up. So I'm going to take the strength route. It gives you a little bit more damage than dexterity at this point. But now I have Sword Fighter 2, and I can two-hand the sword, so now I can at least wield it. And right on top of this sanctuary is another boss, so we're going to go knock him down real fast. And he is going to give us the key that we need to get to the Strength Ring. Make sure you use your weapon enchant before you run in. Alright, now I did this on purpose. This was not an accident. This is intentional. If you space your attacks out and you don't run out of energy, and you consistently hit him at about 1.5 seconds apart, you keep him staggered so much that he can't even cast his spells. As you can see there, he only got one spell out right before he died, and he never even attacked me once. So if you space your attacks out, you can actually stagger him through the entire fight. So after he's down, you're going to pick up the black pearl, you're going to pick up the key, and he's also going to give you 4,000 salt. So we're going to bell and go back to the sanctuary, where we're going to spend that 4,000 salt, and we're going to get up to sword fire level 3, and we're going to pick up an extra potion slot. And once you have sword fighter level 3, you can one hand your great sword use a shield and a sword at this point. I'm just going to continue to rock the shield on my back for the equip weight. See, unlike Dark Souls, you can have your shield equipped as long as it's not in your hand, it doesn't affect your equip weight. 
So as long as it's on your back, you don't have to worry about the equip weight. It only changes when you use it to block. Also at this point, since this is practically the best sanctuary, you, you want to join this creed so that you can have access to the vendor, the alchemist. And then since you're now this creed, go ahead and put down your travel vendor, merchant vendor, blacksmith, those are the ones I would recommend. Definitely put the travel vendor down and buy some horns so we can move back and forth between sanctuaries because we are going to backtrack to get the attack power, um, the attack power charm. So right here, the run was going so well that in Salt and Sanctuary, you have to have Salt. So my run was just going so well that this platform randomly decided that I cannot jump off of this platform. Every time I stand on this platform and I press X, I just fall straight through it. I'm going to do it again here. I line up a nice jump and I just fall through. So on the next attempt, I'm just going to long jump over the entire platform. We'll move on. Always have to have salt and salt and sanctuary. There is no perfectly good run. So we're not actually going to do anything in this area. We're actually just going to swing through and pick up this ring. There is a little secret here though. You can push this door open and grab another uh, bag of salt, but we're not really counting our bags of salt anymore. We've got enough levels to where we're at sword fire level 3, so we can even one hand the sword, and we've got plenty of strength. At this point, you could either start building into armor or a different type of weapon or something. So, right here, you would normally continue and fight the jester to get your first brand, but if you take this detour and you go down right here, behind the bushes, you can pick this up, which is it allows you to change creeds of sanctuaries, and here's the plated band, which increases your strength. Now that we got the strength ring, we're going to port back, we're going to go to the village of Smiles, kill that boss, and we're going to pick up the attack power charm. And that should complete the guide, for the most part. Always remember to use the weapon enchants. They're nice on these bosses. <clears throat> There's different weapon enchants, and bosses have different weaknesses, so you pretty much pair the enchant to their weakness. So here is the chef thing, so if you want an RP chef outfit, and up this ladder, at this lever, is the Black Pearl, so that's another free level. And that shortcut actually leads back up to the Village of Smiles Sanctuary. But down here is the passageway to the attack power charm. So that pretty much completes the guide. At this point, in under 20 minutes, you've got the attack, the attack power charm, you've got the strength ring, you've got the equip load ring, and you've got the upgraded sword, and you're ready just to take on the game at this point. The guide does continue. Um, 
Next I'm going to show the location of the grasping ring. Also the shortcut to get to the castle of storms without having the first brand that you need to get there. And also how to skip the dragon and get the second brand and skip castle of storms completely if you wanted to. Also in this description at some point, I don't have it yet, but I am going to make a video for how to dupe salt, how to dupe weapons and stuff like that. Get all the cheats in there. I would recommend just playing on the nor normal difficulty, but it is fun to play with cheats sometimes. So we just started at the Bandits Pass Sanctuary. From there you're going to go right, and I'm going to go ahead and skip past some of these mobs to save time, but it's kind of risky. Normally you might just want to fight through and get the salt for doing so. So right here you're supposed to have the brand to enter the Castle of Storms, but I'm going to long jump, take the shortcut and get on in here. At this point I'm a little under level to be in here, I mean not by a whole lot, but the fact that I'm naked and I'm in here, I do a lot of damage, but anything that hits me is going to do a lot of damage to me also. So watch my life bar when these two little flying skulls get a hold of me. These two guys almost killed me. So up here is the mending band, the shortcut access, and the NPC if you was to continue the quest would be there. The mending band only increases your regeneration of your health by like a little bit. All of our other rings are practically better, so maybe it's good for a different build. But here's the sanctuary to the Castle of Storms. So we're going to go ahead and take this. So this is right before the boss of this area, the Kraken Worm, and that is the shrine before him. So normally you would just go this way and then continue up this little staircase here. But we're going to take the detour and we're going to grab the ring. So this is the grasping ring, the salt ring, increases your salt per kill. And here's the shortcut to skip the dragon, to grab the key and the brand and just skip over Castle of Storms completely. You just get butt ass naked, take your sword off because it's going to weigh a lot, and you just long jump all the way over. And then from here you can grab the key and grab your brand. I hope you guys like this video. If you do, give it a thumbs up. You know, subscribe if you like. I do plan on making a lot more videos like this in the future, so I do welcome the criticism. You know, if you guys have anything to say that could help me get better. I would appreciate it. This is one of my first videos, so let me know what you guys think. Thanks.